Hi, my name is Teacher Caroline, and this is Quick Tips for VIP Kid. Today we're going to talk about props. I'm going to share with you all the props that I've accumulated over the past two and a half years teaching. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Please click the subscribe button below if you'd like to see videos about online teaching. I currently teach for OutSchool and VIP Kid. You can also follow me on Instagram at teacher underscore Caroline. Now I have been extremely hesitant to make a video like this because I don't want any new or prospective VIP Kid teachers to feel like they have to have this many props. You absolutely do not. It does not make you a good teacher to have lots of props. I just happen to have a lot of props because I have three young children and very generous grandparents and so I've accumulated a lot over the years. If you've watched my channel before, you know that my son took Lingo Bus classes online learning Chinese and some of our very favorite teachers used almost no props at all. What makes you a great teacher is your connection with the student, your patience, and your teaching strategies. Not a million props. That said, I thought it would be kind of fun and an interesting exercise for myself to go through all my props, sort through them, get rid of the ones I don't really use, and share the ones that I do so maybe you can get an idea of the types of things that you may want to consider accumulating over time. Now, I want to mention I'm not an official spokesperson for VIP Kid. I'm just a teacher who likes to share information and learn from other teachers as well. If you'd like to download a free list of all the props that I use in class, you can do so. It's in the description box below. Now, a couple of caveats to mention. The first one is that although I'm certified to teach from level one, to level eight and a bunch of different supplementary courses as well. I mostly teach levels three and above. I don't teach very many level one and two. And if I did, there's a very good chance that I would have a few different props available to me, but I just don't teach them and so I don't have them around. So I wanna talk about the overall storage. I basically have five areas in which I store items. The first area is my big boxes, six of them. The second area is large items. They either live down here or way up there on the top of my bookcase. The third area are flashcards and instructional items here. The fourth area are two-dimensional props that are in some hanging files. And the fifth area are two-dimensional props on sticks. Let's get started with this shelf right here, which houses flashcards, whiteboards, and books. I have two whiteboards and I actually have a couple on the way from Amazon that I use. The ones that I will receive soon, I'm going to create a tic-tac-toe that's more permanent and a teacher versus student that's more permanent. But right now I have a magnetic one and just a regular one. I have bubbles and a box that I use for many games. You can see that in my extension video. I have all the high frequency words that I've handwritten out, as well as some really great resources here from Cozy Post. I'll link that Etsy shop below. Letter flashcards, and then I have number flashcards and shape flashcards as well. I only have two books in my classroom, Quiet Loud and Airport. I have these stars that I use to reward physical stars while I do the digital ones. And then I have these printed laminated sheets as well. I don't use these super frequently. Most of these I've transformed into digital form, but I have these as a backup if I need them. So this one is great to communicate to the student when their assessment and project will be due. I have a United States map to sort of flesh out where I live specifically if the student's more advanced and would be interested in that. I have a how old are you sheet. I have an about me sheet. I have a how are you sheet. And then I have a what do you like to do sheet. One thing I do want to mention about my specific flashcards that I purchased, I purchased them a couple of years ago at the dollar store, so I'm sure they're probably gone by now, but maybe you can find something similar. For the vowels, each one has on the back a picture of the long form and the short form. I, I, ice cream, I, I, iguana. That's come in really handy. I zoomed out the camera a little bit to show you all the letters and numbers I have magnetized beside me. I also have some mathematical symbols. These are great for using on my small whiteboard to show the students some mathematical equations or do phonics practice. Okay, now I'm going to move to the big stuff category. This is stuff that I have to either put on the floor under my desk or up on the very top shelf because it just doesn't fit anywhere else very well. I have a cone that I used to teach that 3D shape, a brick for rectangular prism, a drum for a million different reasons. Sometimes I'm explicitly teaching it. It's great for quiet loud. It's also great to kind of spice up rhythmic reading or singing. I really don't buy very many props explicitly for teaching, but I couldn't pass up this box because it was for sale. It was only about three or four dollars and I do love it. Oh, and there's a dino in here. I was wondering where my second one went. <laughs> it's great for the birthday unit and also I'm sure you could think of a lot of other fun reasons to use it. And then I have this snake. This is awesome for scales 
and short and long. It's just so humorously long. It's fun to use in the classroom. Next, I have a balloon, which is great for a thousand reasons. Heavy and light, birthday. It's just a great object to have around. All right, now I'll show you my two-dimensional props that I have in hanging files in my desk. The first category is personal photos. Again, I would do this digitally now using Manicam most of the time, but I do still have them on hand in case I need them. I have a family photo, my dog, a couple of photos of me with friends for learning that word. And then I also have a picture of my son's birthday party for a birthday unit. Next folder houses math and technology. I have a laptop, a clock from the dollar store, a desktop, money from the dollar store, and a number chart. The next category I call nature. So I have a butterfly life cycle I got from the dollar store, a mountain, Meg growing up, a waterfall, a hill, sometimes I use it for a field as well, glacier, desert, island, four seasons, a leaf and the leaves changing, a letter with to and from filled out, and a chart of feelings. Next is days of the week. I got this set at Target, I think, a while ago. It has all the days of the week as well as today is, tomorrow will be, and yesterday was. And I have magnets on the back so I can stick these on my magnetic background if I need to. Then I have a similar set for months. I have all the months as well as the current month is. And then I also have a one page list of all the months kind of with seasons attached. It comes in handy as well. All right, next I'll move to props on sticks. I made so many of these when I first started teaching and I really don't use the people as much as I used to, but I do use some of the other things a lot. So for family, I have grandma and grandpa, an example of a family, a couple of options for mom and dad and baby. And I kind of think of these as friends. I have a whole bunch of them and I really don't use them very often. And I do have a teacher. Again, I don't use her very often either, but what I do use is often James, Lee, and this one is good for brothers or friends. I have a level one Meg and Mike. I have this Meg and Mike that I use a lot. I have the Chinese and American flags that I use a lot. Most of the following props on sticks I do actually use quite a bit. So I have monsters. Three of them are VIP kid related and one's just my own little guy. I have two animals that I use quite frequently. The frog is not only good for teaching the word frog, but also for skip counting or teaching hop. And then rain, sun, and moon. I use these all the time to talk about what time of day it is or the weather. This one's a great one. I don't know where I originally got it. It's great for size words and color words as well. These are sort of instructional related, so I don't use this one very often, but it's kind of like idea or think. This one's great for asking the student to read. And then the heart comes in handy for lots of things, especially when you're asking the student what they like. I have stop and go for various games and then a bicycle. This is a great one. Most kids have a bike and they love to talk about their bike and where they go and what color it is. All right, next I'm going to go through all six spins and then I think I'm finally done. The first one is stuffed animals and puppets. I only have four, a monkey because I just don't have another animal monkey, a teddy bear, a panda bear, and my only puppet is just this little dog. But some people love puppets and have many more interesting colorful ones. It's just not my personal thing, so he does just fine. But what I do like is that he has a mouth that opens and closes, which is good for question and answer and getting the student to speak. Next, it's time for food. This is an area that I would recommend investing just a little bit in if you have no food items at all. So one of my favorites is the egg because it hatches, which is great for the animal unit as well. I have cherries, an orange, orange juice. This also doubles as circular cylinder if you need it to. An apple, I kind of wish mine was bigger and bolder, but this is what I have. So I got this whole squishy set of fruits on Amazon. Again, I don't purchase things specifically for teaching very often, but I really wanted a lemon for that sour unit. I was teaching it over and over again, and I'm really happy I did. And they actually smell really good. So in this set, I have lemon, watermelon. This reads really well on camera, and so I like it for any time I'm talking about fruit to be kind of representative of fruit. Strawberry, mango, and banana. I have a hot dog, which is great to associate with the United States. Kiwi, spicy peppers, again, for the five senses unit. A cupcake, you gotta have some sweets. They really love that. I also have a sucker for sweets. Grapes, bread, butter is good for the farm unit. This potato, it doesn't look much like a potato, but it's what I have. Corn and carrot. Carrot is a really good representation of vegetable, I think. 
I have a hamburger. I got this at the dollar spot at Target. It's also a good reward to build the hamburger, but then within I can also use it for cheese, lettuce, tomato, onion. It kind of hits a lot of different things all in one product. I have milk, pizza, a very popular one, pancakes, and then a couple of meat examples, steak and bacon. And that's it. I just sorted through them and got rid of some that I don't use very often. So these are really the ones that I most use. And then I have a little pot to stir with. This is also good to ask the student about their family. Who cooks in your family? Do you like to cook? So the next box is animals. It might seem strange that I'm sharing this, but it's perfect to teach hollow bones. I got this from another teacher. I can't take credit for it, but birds have hollow bones and mammals do not. Some wild animals that I have and use are a tiger a gorilla, a zebra, I use this to represent zoo, a shark, love this one. It's really good for scary um, and all kinds of language. I really like having a shark. Elephant, polar bear, giraffe. I have a little lion cub and then a regular lion. It's kind of good to show the growing up. Turtle, this one comes up in a lot of lessons because it's a, such a slow animal and it's included in the tortoise and the hare story. So I use the turtle a lot. I have these two fish, I use these quite a lot too. And it's also great to show the irregular plural of fish is fish. <laughs> a crab, he comes up in some of the animal movement units because he crawls. I have a bug. I have dinosaur bones to teach bones and a couple different butterflies. Farm animals. This is the best I have for chick. I got this from another teacher and it can hatch out of the egg. I have a chicken, dog, I'm sorry if you can't see these, pig, cow, horse, duck, lamb, and bunny. Whew, that's a lot. All right, I wrote this down. My next bin I would call clothing, culture, home, and sports. Here's some clothing items, shoes, a Barbie with various clothing items we can talk about, including her jacket and her boots. I also have a dress for her that we can discuss. She's got a little skirt and she has a hat. I have socks, which are great for stinky. And then I have a mitten and a glove to show the difference between those. So sort of travel or culture related, I have a globe a suitcase and some hong bao. Sports, we have goggles, soccer ball, baseball, basketball, football, and ping pong paddle. And then for home, I have just a house, bed, couch or sofa, table or desk, dresser or wardrobe, and a little chair. Oh, and a mirror. Okay, the next bin is instructional props, instruments, and celebratory props. <laughs> so I have this little guy, it's a finger puppet mouse. The reason he's instructional is he's really good to talk about small things. Some other instructional materials are a die, you can sort of pretend to roll. And then for look and see, these are really great. Here are some toys that I use. Many of them have multiple purposes that I'll try to mention. So I have a Rubik's cube that's also really great for the word cube. Almost all of my students know about this and many of them will run and get theirs. I love these blocks for a lot of things, especially for same and different or for these blocks, those blocks. A pinwheel is just a fun way to get the attention of your younger students and it's also great for wind. And then a crown really wins them over every time. Often they'll run and get theirs. A robot is really a good symbol of what toys are. It seems to come up in the curriculum a lot, so it's useful. Love my fidget spinner. It's really good for the verb spin and for fast and slow. Great one to have. The shovel is good for a sandbox or dig. I have a couple of instruments, a guitar that doesn't play music and a tambourine. And then some celebratory items. I have clapping hands. <laughs> A treasure box, they tend to use that a lot at the end of some little game. There might be a treasure box so you can hold this one up. And then also a trophy. I don't like this one. This is from high school theater for me. I wish I had a better kind of more traditional trophy shaped one, but I'll work on that. All right, the last bin has quite a lot. Birthday, nature, sensory, tools, transportation, and weather. Let's get started. Now first it randomly has this block I use for circular cylinder. Now to transportation. Airplane, taxi cab, train, school bus, truck, regular bus, and car. This is a great one. I use it for fast a lot. Kids tend to like those sports cars. So for birthday, I use the balloon I mentioned earlier. I also have this cake, 
a party hat, and candles. I also use the present that I mentioned earlier as well. So for weather, we already talked about the sun and rain that I have in another area. I have this little umbrella, but it's also fun to bring a full-sized umbrella in your classroom. The kids crack up. These are Christmas ornaments for freeze or icicle or ice and then snow. And then the fan is good for hot. Ah, oh, that feels good. <laughs> a few sensory items. Flowers are good for a million reasons. They grow, they're colorful. They smell good. Cotton is great to teach soft, but I've actually taught units about how we make thread out of cotton. The feather has a ton of uses. Birds have feathers, so you can talk about that. And also, it's very soft. The door, though part of the home, I usually use it to teach hard or loud. And then a few tools. I have this that looks like a paintbrush, a large paintbrush, and a hammer. That concludes the tour of all the props in my classroom. Thank you so much for sticking with me on this rather long video. I really appreciate it. If you found anything helpful in this video or you learned something, I hope you'll consider clicking the thumbs up button. I would really appreciate your support. Please leave a comment below either letting me know what your favorite prop is or let me know what types of videos you think I should create. I'm always looking for new ideas and would love to meet the needs of the people watching these videos. So what would you like to see next? Thank you so much for your time. Have a fabulous week. Your students are lucky to have you and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.